And we are live. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of China, Hawaii, and You. I am your host, Andrew Zimmerman. And uh, we've been talking a lot today about, um, or over the course of this program, to a lot of different people regarding Chinese. Learning Chinese is something that, as everybody knows, has fascinated me. But this is actually the first time that I've gotten to talk to a professional Chinese teacher, and that makes me really happy. So we want to tell everybody about our guest, uh, Cindy Ming. I'm going to try to introduce her, and then I'm going to let her go over anything that I missed. Cindy is the associate director of the Star Talk program at UH Manoa, which is an intensive Mandarin learning program. Uh, the goal of it is to make people uh, completely proficient in anything that they might want to do. So whether that's just uh, tourism or business or maybe even going on to higher education. So we'd like to welcome Cindy. And uh, did I miss anything in your introduction there? Can I tweak it a little? <laughs> sure, no problem. I try okay, my best. <laughs> that's fine. Um, I'm the associate director of the Center for Chinese Studies at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And one of our projects this year is the Star Talk, it's the year round Star Talk program. It's the first time that uh, uh, the National Security Agency is trying a year round Star Talk. They're usually just summer programs, but this is a year round program. And um, I am the uh, principal investigator of that program. But everything else? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I've been very <laughs> sorry. I am. Um... I, no problem. I, I must have mixed that up in my head. I'm very sorry about that. No problem, um, no problem. But that's very exciting. I didn't know the NSA was getting into this. I mean, you don't have to really think hard about why, but like it's it's um it's definitely very exciting to me that these kinds of programs, intensive programs, exist within the United States because up until you know maybe 20 or 30 years ago, uh, the only way that you could get into an intensive program without going to China itself was being in the military. Hmm. Um, um, so well, well, the um, the Star Talk program aims to start much earlier. So, um, actually, ideally, uh, professionals say the earlier you can start, the better. And in in part of our conversation we were having before um, this program came on, is that um, Hawaii finally has a um, an immersion, a Chinese immersion program uh, at Marinol School. Yeah. And that begins at kindergarten. I applied for a job there. <laughs> and by the time oh, really. And by the time the kids uh, get to like third grade, and I think they're up to fourth grade now, they sound like little native speakers. It's it's wonderful. So the earlier you can start, the better. Mm -hmm. And the Star Talk program actually begins in high school. So um if the summer programs we we dip down to as low as uh, intermediate school, but this year round program begins with juniors in high school. So before they would become uh, involved with the military <laughs> and, um, and uh, trying to become proficient is a huge undertaking. Um, I, I don't have the, you need thousands of hours uh, on, in, in training. So, um, so even a little bit, a little bit is better than nothing. And then to get to uh, proficient, so the, the different levels of proficiency to get to a level where you can uh, handle your job or do negotiations, uh, that would take a really long time. So we, we have this, we're, we're aiming for this pipeline now. So we have um, an immersion program in, say, Marinol School. We have uh, Star Talk programs that that um, try to get more students interested and get teachers better at teaching and uh, develop better materials. And we ha uh, Hawaii is really lucky because we also have a flagship program at the University of Hawaii um, in the Chinese department. And the, and the flagship program is the one that tries to take people who are already at quite high level and push them to, um, to, to a professional level so that um, they can use Chinese in, in, their, in their careers um, mm -hmm. once they graduate. So we have a pipeline going. <laughs> You know, um, that's really, really exciting. That's one of the things that I want to talk to you about, and we will get into um, 
because there's a really big jump that you could make between you know having a conversation like what you had uh, what, what we had just before the show right where we were speaking chinese for about 10 minutes without a problem um but there is still such a big gap when it comes to are you professionally useful right you know um when you're in a professional setting even missing a word or two is sometimes lethal to your understanding of what maybe a client's requirements are, or even just making a good impression. And it seems to me that that kind of gap is, it seems almost, it, well, it certainly seemed at the time when I was first learning, completely un unbreachable and impossible. Do you ever get students that are just kind of fall into despair about like, oh no, I'm never gonna get through this? Uh, mm -hmm. I guess <laughs> um, <laughs> most of the time students aren't as aren't quite as uh, ambitious as you are. I mean, you know, um, we we have lots of students who are taking foreign language um, for maybe because it's a requirement uh, at, at college. Maybe they think um, um, when I travel. I would like to be able to use some of it. So what's required for, you know, uh, traveling is much less challenging than trying to be proficient in it in a career. So most of our students, I think, um, aim for that travel level, it's, um, intermediate it, it, we, we, uh, in the um, in the proficiency ratings, it's mm. called intermediate, where you can actually use the language to manage daily daily needs so you can you know order something to eat you can you can figure out how to get from point a to point b you can rent a hotel room you can go shopping that's all that's all you know uh travel level proficiency and um most people aim for that and lots lots of people you know manage to get there mm. uh, for that and i think that's the level at which you and i were conversing uh, just before the show started, um, you're, 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 you, you seem very um, comfortable with, it, with the language. It comes easily. Your, your pronunciation is quite good. Um, to go to the next level, it's true. It's a, it's a, you may be already at the next level. I, I don't know, but but um, to go to the next level, the next level up is um, you can narrate and describe. So if you know if somebody were the uh were to if you were to say um oh i i slipped and i fell and i have to go to the hospital now and somebody says you know so exactly what happened um you can tell a story so you can tell stories in past tense present tense future tense that's the next level up okay and uh at that level you can handle most professional professional things so you know in your in your in your career you you would get rather good in a certain arena talking in a certain arena right the next level beyond that takes a lifetime yeah um, um because if you're trying to become more like a, a native speaker in all arenas so you can talk about science you can talk about sports you can talk about politics and belief systems you can try to convince somebody that they're wrong and you're right you know that that just takes a lot more a lot more um training dedication ambition all of that so um if 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 for the people who have said that that is their goal their goal is to try to to be to reach that level. I've never met anybody that said I can't do it, because if you if you have that kind of um, dedication, determination to begin with, you get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, no, I definitely um, can relate to the struggles of not really knowing how much longer it's going to go. Right, and um, I think coming to peace with the journey. And like you said, accepting that it's going to be a lifetime and there's always going to be the odd word here and there as you don't know. Um, mm -hmm. That's a really important thing if you're trying to reach the heights of it. But I remember when I first got to Shanghai, I was um, very uh, timid and really fumbling over my own words um, when it came to even just getting a boba, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I was very proud of myself um, uh, when I 
memorize the words um jinju nyo nai like uh, bubble tea <laughs> <laughs> and um you know all of that culminated when i i specifically remember on my very last uh conversation in chinese within china mm -hmm. it was in a taxi on the way to the airport and uh the guy uh, he looks over to the back of it and he says, uh, And I say, Shuda. And he, he, are you American? Yes. And I was like, okay, all right. We've got this conversation so far. All right. <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can handle whatever's going on. He's going to ask me some basic cultural questions. He's going to um, maybe uh, talk about our food or um, what I liked about Shanghai. Um, but no, what he said was, um, uh, oh my God. <laughs> which means, oh my goodness. <laughs> means, what do you think of Biden pulling all of the American soldiers out of Afghanistan? And I, my, my very first thought that I was thinking, I was like, this was not in the textbook. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh -huh. but I gave uh, I gave my best shot at it, and um, it was actually a really interesting conversation. Um, I re I remember meeting a surprising number of um, really big his historic history aficionados. Like we're talking, you would think that they had PhDs and they were taxi drivers just because it paid more. Um, <laughs> I don't, man. The, the economy of this place is something that I'll never understand. Uh, but but um, you know. Uh, well, the, hopefully that does give you some uh, some impression of how far my Chinese did end up going, right? And I was um, shooting for graduate school at the time, but you know some circumstances had to change, and I ended up back here. So I would like to go back and hopefully use a little bit more, uh, maybe professionally. But if it's not professionally, I don't mind. I have plenty of fun talking into can you know um, cantinas and restaurants and just the odd Chinese person on a hike like it's all it's 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 a useful skill that I'm going to keep around for probably the rest of my life um cool. so that was some very interesting talk story but I do want to get a little bit through star talk um the very first thing that I want to do though and this is maybe a little bit off topic but I, I think it's very relevant is the loss of the Confucius Institute mm. and I wanted to talk to you about how you feel that impacted the uh, status of learning Chinese within the university context, because almost all Confucius Institutes across the United States are gone. Um, the one at my university that sponsored my trip to Nanjing in 2017, which was the first time that I really got interested in this, they're now gone. Um, like I said, I think uh, the Department of Defense is getting pretty thorough to make sure that they're all out. But I wanted to ask you, um, you know, how did that impact um, UH Manoa's status of learning Chinese? Because I understand that people were quite shibuda, like they didn't really want to let it go. Of course not. Uh, it came, it was not, it was a little bit unexpected. It wasn't, mm -hmm. there was, it was not that there was no warning because we knew that um, the situation, the tension between the US and China had been growing. Um, and of course, um, the suspicion was that, you know, since these institutes were funded by the Chinese government, even though it was by the Chinese Ministry of Education, mm -hmm. um, primarily, um, um, that somehow they were spy institutions. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, uh, We've always dealt the, at the University of Hawaii. We've always dealt with it by saying, you know, everything we we have is completely open. Y mm -hmm. You're welcome to come to anything we do, any any event, any classes we teach, any um, any exhibitions we hold. It's all open to the public. Um, so mm. <laughs> you can see for yourself if 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 there's anything um, untoward in what right. we're doing. So we we ran for. For 13 years, and what I what I find was so ironic about that whole situation was I think that um, the goal of the of the of the Confucius Institute and the goal of something like the Star Talk was exactly the same. Mm -hmm. It was to um, it was to create more interest in learning Chinese. It was to create more knowledge about China. It was to improve the the um, the 
the level of Chinese language instruction we were giving. Mm -hmm. So what, <laughs> what particularly uh, struck me was, um, you know, towards the end, uh, and the Confucius Institutes, um, quite unlike what the news media was saying, was not dictated. What we did was not controlled by China at all. Mm. So um, every different, every Confucius Institute comes up with its own program. Mm. Every Confucius Institute decides what it wants to do. And then it writes a proposal and sends that proposal into um, Confucius Institute headquarters and says, okay, this is what I want to do. Do you want to fund me? Mm. And um, very seldom, They'll, they'll say, um, like there was like a, a couple items that we had asked for that they said um, they weren't gonna fund. Be, actually, and I remember it wasn't, it was only because they said, you're not applying to the right um, place. We fund um, activities, we don't fund material development. If you wanna do material de development, go to this other unit in our, in our, in our organization. So, so every Confucius Institute decided for itself how it wanted to proceed to uh, improve Chinese language education. So for example, a difference between Hawaii and Idaho, say. Um, Hawaii has some of the earliest, the oldest Chinese language schools in the nation. Mm. And Hawaii has maybe a hundred Chinese language programs. There's, 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 uh, there's, Chinese language being taught after school on weekends in in the DOE in private schools at the universities, you know, there's Chinese language programs everywhere. So we decided very early on we didn't want to compete. We we didn't want to compete with anybody that was um, already existing. So what we wanted to do was we want to supplement. We wanted to enhance. Okay, so that's very different from some other Confucius institutes where there was nobody teaching Chinese. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the Confucius Institute was offering the first uh, classes that had ever been in that state. And in the, um, the some of the government, U.S. government um, concern about that situation was, you know, if the only Chinese that's being taught here is being taught by the PRC, uh, a PRC government funded group. Um, what kind of um, what kind of assurance do we have that this is not propaganda? Mm. Okay. And what we've always argued, I think, what all of the Confucius Institutes have argued is, we're at such a, I mean, with such an elementary level, you can't get to propaganda when you're talking about. Um, let's learn the numbers. <laughs> yeah. let's learn Others, you know, you 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 can't get to you can't get to that. Um, and for for a place like uh, Hawaii, the University of Hawaii, the Center for Chinese Studies, we have forty nine faculty specialists. We're offering one hundred and fifty classes in Chinese. Okay, what the Confucius Institute did was such what, what didn't affect the Center for Chinese Studies program at all. I think a lot of the faculty never even knew we existed. Okay, it was just one program among this huge in this huge enterprise. So from our point of view, you know, the fear that this is propaganda and that you know our students are getting a skewered um, stream of information about China just didn't make any sense. Um, you know, at the elementary levels, you know, all we're talking about is colors and dates and you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And then at the, we never got to, at, in our Confucius Institute, we never got to the higher levels. And if American students are interested in, you know, debating philosophy and, and political science, they go to the Center for Chinese Studies, which I've taught, where the courses are taught by US citizens. Um, so anyway, so from, from our point of view, the Confucius Institute was, was, was never a problem. And we always try to, if anybody said, um, um, we have doubts, you know, we would say, well, come and visit us and, and, and look at whatever you want to look at and we'll talk to you about whatever you want to talk about anyway. But it didn't work. The, mm -hmm. the, the, the situation, the tension between the US and China is still so sad. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's so sad that, that, there, that there, there is so, so much tension um, 
between between the two countries. Um, and what is ironic is, um, so when the Confucius Institute closed, um, uh, uh, to be fair, the University of Hawaii tried uh, very hard to soften the blow for for, for um, especially for the for the Chinese people who were working. Like we had um, three instructors from from our partner institution, Beijing Foreign Studies University, and uh, I'm trying to remember five five TAs, five graduate students. So they tried very hard to make sure that you know these people were taken care of that that their next steps then um, were in place and stuff like that. Um, but for about a month, every day, I had people in my office crying, like, what did we do wrong? What, what happened? I mean, you know, we had been named a model Confucius Institute, and um, the Chinese government had just given us a million dollars to, to, re to renovate our space to, to make it, you know, more worthwhile of being uh, such a Confucius Institute. The university actually paid the money back um, to, to the Chinese government. So anyway, that was all very sad. But then almost right after the Confucius Institute closed down, StarTalk picked up. So um, you know the, the amount of money we're getting from the Confucius Institute was almost immediately replaced by StarTalk because it's, they have the same goal both the Chinese government and the American government want more people to be more functional in Chinese. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's a really, really interesting story. And thank you very much for sharing. I wanted to say one thing about that, and then we'll go into start talk, bearing in mind, we do have eight minutes left in the show. Um, so uh, I remember when I went into Nanjing, um, this was a trip sponsored by the Confucius Institute. I was kind of shocked that we didn't have to pay anything for it except for the airfare. Um, and I remember uh, talking to some people beforehand and they, you get the obvious talk about like, ooh, you better watch out for the propaganda or ooh, you better not, I guess, say something bad about Xi Jinping or, or some kind of pull some kind of faux pas or something like that, right? But I will admit to you, and maybe this isn't a good thing to say, that I kind of was hoping for when I got to China to learn about, for lack of a better word, an alternate history, right? Like, I kind of did want to, see, like, I, I was looking forward to hearing teachers, like, say, on a whiteboard, like, here's top 10 reasons why Tiananmen Square never happened, or <laughs> maybe like, a, <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> or you, you, maybe some, not something quite that obvious, but like, you know, maybe something around um, American imperialism, or like, uh, maybe some colored history around Taiwan. Um, and I was, I went into the classes in Nanjing, with my ears, particularly perked up for that kind of stuff, right. And for three weeks, absolutely nothing absolutely nothing there was like cooking classes and like tai chi <laughs> and uh you know we went through the numbers and the colors and people put basic sentences together because everybody's level is like hsk1 roughly <laughs> i was a little bit higher but um not too much higher at the time unfortunately and uh i was kind of dumbstruck by the end of it i was i was, I was um and, you know i was i was thinking damn i was promised so much propaganda where where, where was it <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, that, that stuff made me particularly sad. And I ended up actually writing a couple senators, um, that about my experiences and why I supported it. They probably thought that I was like a bot or, you know, maybe yeah. a fake Chinese person. You'd been, you'd been... I, I don't know, but huh. you know, um, I, it's, it's whatever, whatever it's, it, what's done is done. Um, we have a little bit of time to talk about Star Talk now. And let, what let me let me just uh, follow up what your sure. comment with one with one observation, and that and that and that is why many very often Chinese people say Americans don't understand us at all. Mm -hmm. um, in the in the situation where you were brought to China, um, China is all about harmony. Mm -hmm. It's not going to introduce any controversial topics. They don't want con they don't want to have an argument with you. They mm -hmm. they they. Uh, they are going to try to um, make you have as pleasant as 
uh, an experience as possible. Uh, on the on the other on the other, um, let me let me just give you a a, a little um, anecdote from another another era. Um, Peking University is one of China's best, and they have they are they are a, a, an exchange partner of ours. And when President Bill Clinton when traveled to China. He visited Peking University and he wanted to have an opportunity to talk to the students. The students who were in the in the lecture hall with, with him were handpicked and and they were um, uh, they were like they, they, they were talked to ahead of time. And you know, the Western media always says, oh, China is gonna, you know clamp down and, and control the flow of information. No, they were talked to because um, they didn't want uh, the students asking anything that would make Bill Clinton uncomfortable. Mm. So, you know, they were said, okay, you're not going to ask him anything about Monica Lewinsky. You're not going <laughs> to ask him anything about the problems he's having, you know, with the U.S. government. Just mm. stay, stay, stay high, stay in the level of, you know, how do our two countries uh, get along better? Okay. So anyway, so, so, so the thing about... Um, harmony. China is looking for harmony. <laughs> so it wouldn't have shoved any propaganda at you. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, um, um, that's, that's, a, that's a very interesting story. Thank you very much. Uh, we are right about out of time. There's one more. There's two questions that I have time for, okay? okay. The very first one um, is, what are the qualifications for applying as a teacher and as a student into the program? This is a viewer question. Uh -huh. Start off program, uh, no qualifications. Um, we 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 are not looking for elite. We are not looking for you know. In in fact, if you have had no other um, opportunities to learn Chinese before, we're interested in you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the current program, uh, we already have sixty students enrolled, and um, so we're we're going to be um, whittling down as the as the program goes by. But if you're if you're if you're very interested, email me at uh, cyndy at hawaii.edu, and I'll be happy to talk to you about um, whether we could fit you in. Oh yeah, yeah. and then um, what about uh, what about the teachers? Do you think that like non-natives could ever make it as teachers? Definitely, there's a there's a role for non-native teachers because um, you have an insight into the student learning process that native speakers do not. So I think that the ideal um, program has a mix of um, native and non-native. I, I agree with you completely. And then uh, we have time for one last question, okay? We have okay. one last question, which is, uh, well, <laughs> I haven't heard enough all right, for, for, for the viewers, I said from one to ten, how would you rate my Chinese? <laughs> yeah, Chinese is quite good. I, I I'd say above five, but I but but in order above to, five, above five. Okay, okay. But okay. in order to to see how much above five, you know, I I need <laughs> more <laughs> more more data. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, um, hopefully, I'll be able to uh, come down to the university and pay you a visit because I would very much be interested in continuing this conversation. It's something that I hope you tell you can tell is something that I'm very very deeply passionate about. So. Um, we would like to thank everybody for tuning in. Um, thank you very much for the viewer questions. I'm sorry we didn't have time to quite get to them all, but we had a really, really interesting conversation. And I also wanted to very much thank uh, Cindy for coming in and sharing her, some of her experience and expertise in Chinese education. Thanks for the opportunity. <laughs> yes, thank you very Bye. much, everybody. Mahalo. Bye-bye.